As a mom of two, I know that having babies can really take a toll on your sex life. Those passionate nights with your partner are suddenly replaced by an endless supply of dirty diapers, spit up, and middle of the night feedings. They can really get a girl in the mood. I'm Dr. Logan Levkoff, and I'm gonna help you combat those post-baby libido busters on Mom Ed in the Bedroom. Hi, thanks so much for joining me on Mom Ed. This show is all about helping you to identify the factors that make your sex life less than satisfying after becoming a mom. Today's guest is my friend, doctor, mother of three, and author of A New Mom Survival Guide, Dr. Jenna Wider. <laughs> Jenna, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Logan. Jenna, what's the most common medical reason for why we have lackluster libidos after having kids? Well, I think one of the biggest symptom complaints is fatigue and exhaustion. You know, what new mom or a mom with kids isn't absolutely exhausted? Right, all day long. All day long, and unfortunately, a lot of moms aren't getting enough sleep. You know, women in this demographic need seven to eight hours of sleep, and if you pull them, most of them aren't getting it. So you need to think about what exactly is going on. One thing I tell women is sometimes there may be an underlying medical condition that causes fatigue and depression, and the symptoms mimic the tired mommy syndrome. So something you need to have on your radar is anemia, iron deficient anemia, which can cause pale skin and a racing heart, dizziness, but it also causes exhaustion. And the other thing is a low thyroid level. W one in 10 women after having a baby are diagnosed with hypothyroidism, which is really a large number. And you can have weight gain and fatigue and cold intolerance and hair loss and a lot of different symptoms that sometimes women just don't recognize. So while many of us are exhausted and experience fatigue, <laughs> some of us may involved. have. Exactly. So we go to the doctor after, you know, six to eight weeks after giving right. birth and they give us the okay. And I, I have to say, I do remember after uh, giving birth, my doctor saying, Logan, you know, you have the okay, you can have sex again, but if for some reason you're not ready, you can tell Lou that I said you weren't ready. <laughs> so what, what is our fear about? What's going on in terms of this, this fear of having sex again? Well, absolutely. I think that after women have a baby, many women have had an episiotomy, they might have had a terror laceration, they may have had a C-section. Women are frightened that maybe it may be painful. And the other thing is with the exhaustion and the sleep deprivation, <laughs> having sex is last on the list somewhere between now and never. <laughs> <laughs> so um, a lot of women experience that sense of fear and and just they really really don't want to have sex whereas their partners might <laughs> might might, might want to I feel like there are a lot of tips that we can give to women at this time I mean it's about redefining sex there are a lot of things that end in pleasure and orgasm that aren't about intercourse absolutely you, know, you could do the everything but yes and also I think we never talk about the importance of lube 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 can certainly change a woman's life at any stage but certainly after absolutely and you make a good point Logan because after a woman has a baby especially if she's breastfeeding her estrogen levels are suppressed because she's producing prolactin and that causes vaginal dryness and that can make sex very uncomfortable let's continue with the idea of the vagina for a second because okay. a lot of women have this sense that once their vagina stretches during delivery that it'll never go back to being what it was right is that true well not really I mean a lot of women worry about vaginal stretching but the truth is you know there are factors at play here vaginal stretching is caused by pelvic muscle exhaustion and you're at risk if you've had multiple pregnancies if you've had a very large baby for women who have gestational diabetes and also if you don't do your kegel exercises <laughs> So if you do Kegel exercises regularly, you can increase that pelvic muscle tone and, and decrease that vaginal stretching. And better for orgasm too. Absolutely, for both male <laughs> and, and female, for sure. Body image plays such a huge role in all of this. And, and we did ask our Cafe Mom community about how they felt about their bodies. And the good news is that a lot of them rated their bodies in eight, that they were okay with how their body was post pregnancy. Right. And the truth is I think we need to reframe some of our thinking. I mean those that upside down kind of smile line below our bellies and the crepey skin are badges of honor. They Absolutely. tell a story. Absolutely. But body image isn't just the only negative thing that goes on. What about real things like postpartum depression? Well, and that's a good point. One of the symptoms of postpartum depression is a lack of libido. And women that aren't in the mood to have sex, sometimes um, it's one of the symptoms of being depressed. They can feel helpless, they can feel hopeless. And we don't really talk about this enough. I mean, we see celebrities talking about this, like Gwyneth Paltrow recently came out to talk about postpartum. And Brooke, Shields. Brooke Shields. Absolutely. And it's putting it on the radar map for a lot of women. But we need to keep the dialogue going because women are suffering in silence, a lot of women, and it affects, it affects a good number of women. 
so the other flip side of this is that antidepressants if taken for postpartum depression can also cause a lowered libido so you need to make sure you're getting the Double attention that you sword. need absolutely and you need therapy and medication and then the medication can be titrated down so your sex life isn't affected so much and, and the sex life is also challenged by this idea that once we become a mom we kind of forget that we are sexual beings. Absolutely. So how do we avoid that trap of only being mom and no longer being Logan or Jenna? No, I think that's a great point. When you look at total body health, you need to look at the physical, the mental, and the sexual. A happy, healthy sex life is a such par and parcel of being a healthy overall woman. And we don't want to forget about that. You know, we place ourselves at the bottom of the totem pole all the time, taking care of our kids, our husbands, sometimes aging parents. And we need to put ourselves up there on the list and having an active, healthy sex life is part of that. Which means sex not only with your partner, but it also means masturbation. Absolutely. Right? Feeling good about your body and having an orgasm makes you want to have more and better sex. Absolutely. And I think it's about a girl's night out too every once in a while. Remembering who you were, remembering what it, right. what it felt like to flirt and be out and have friends and friendships outside of being mom. I agree with you. That can't be your own. It's only part of who you are. And you need to find yourself in that inner voice again and see what's comfortable for you. Definitely. I love when my experience as a sex educator meets my experience as a mom. So I'm going to share a little bit about what I've learned from those moments. Truth be told, I hate to exercise. I would much rather sit with a pint of ice cream on my couch and watch reality TV. But I do know that physical activity is so important to feeling good about yourself. And it's not just about weight, it's about feeling good about your body so that you want to have more sex. So find something, a physical activity that's not sex related that you absolutely love. For me, I love to spin. It's a dark room, it's great music, and it feels like I'm out at a club with my girlfriends. So find something that you love. Jenna, I want to thank you so much for being here and helping us with these solutions to our libido busters. And I want to thank all of you. Thank you for tuning in. And let us know, did we help you solve some of your libido draining moments? Subscribe to Cafe Mom Studios on YouTube and don't miss a single episode of Mom Ed in the Bedroom. See you next time.